Hello, I'm a Pierre X Toycat, and one of the pleasant surprises of the last year, for me at least, was the fact that many other people also have the idea of building things in Minecraft survival that they know they really shouldn't, and therefore they kind of don't want to, but they like seeing them built in creative anyway, or at the very least, people enjoyed seeing me build my one by one never portal grid, me building my 10 to 1 scale desert temple, and me removing all of the lava from the nether. These are really stupid ideas that no one really should have done, and I'm glad I didn't do in survival, but I really enjoy seeing them here in creative, which is where this video idea comes in. I've had so many Minecraft survival builds that I'm like, this would be so cool to see, but the amount of effort is literally measured in the hundreds of hours for something that you could probably do in hundreds of minutes in creative. And that is where today's video comes in because I've had so many of these ideas that I'd absolutely love to make in survival, but just know I really shouldn't, but I really want to see them made anyway. So here we are, we're going to switch over to creative and we're going to do them in today's video, starting with my very first idea, which of course has to be, you know, related to the giant desert temple. A lot of people were inspired by this, even as unfinished and wrongly proportioned as it is, and therefore I figured, you know what, the 10 to 1 scale is a really just impressive way to build things, but just a desert temple feels unfair to the other desert structures, which is why it seems logical to me that we also have to take the desert well, one of which we kind of destroyed right here, we have to take a desert well and we have to build one of these as well. I mean, it is a structure that people can find in the desert biome if they really want to, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the slash fill command, this is one of the handiest Minecraft features they've ever added because you can simply use the slash fill command and just like that you can add a thousand blocks where you want to and as long as you don't make a mistake like I did where now we have to remove an entire layer you can place a thousand blocks in the space per second. What would previously take me you know literally you know like dozens of you know minutes actually I would say like we're talking about an hour in terms of collecting all the sandstone then placing it all to make a just giant cube we can do that in literally four seconds using a command and even when we make a mistake we can fix the mistake using just a you know few more seconds much less than a minute, meaning this is more than a hundred times faster, realistically closer to a thousand times faster, uh, than we can normally place blocks. This means that the 16,000 blocks I'd otherwise need to destroy and replace to make this, you know, just the outside base of it, can be placed in a matter of a minute and a half, and that means we can start building from here pretty darn fast as well. And that the 25,000 blocks needed to make the main structure before including half slabs is also pretty darn easy to do. Now we just have to add a few half slabs, some of air over there, some of actual sandstone up here, which by the way, if you want to make a half uh, the sandstone half slab, surprisingly easy to do. All you gotta do is find the start location, like we'll do right here, and then take the exact same command, like the 10, 10, 10, except instead of going 10 blocks above us, or to nine to make 10, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go up to four blocks above, and that means that, oh, no, not like that. That is a bad idea. Instead, we go up to four blocks above and this makes a little half slow, uh, half slab where we use 500 blocks instead of a thousand. Also, this is one block too tiny, but easy enough to fix. Then we do the opposite for air, of course, to make the kind of bottom half slabs, the ones that are here to allow entry into it. And just like that, we've got ourselves a desert well, Minecraft's most important structure, so useful all the time, except wait a minute, the key thing of a desert well is the water inside. Again, same system can work down here. Except, of course, here we're going to be using water in the kind of half slab format. And although we've created entirely different layers of water, um, when we eventually combine in the middle right here, we should end up with something that vaguely fits and makes sense. I don't think we've got that in the slightest. But from the outside in, we've got ourselves a desert well. A very confusing desert well but a desert well nonetheless, just one that is literally 10 times bigger in terms of each dimension. And because it's a three dimensional object, it's 10 times taller, 10 times deeper, 10 times wider, a thousand times bigger desert well, something that would literally take you days of Minecrafting. And we've done it in just over 15 minutes right here, which is nice, right? There's so many small improvements to this I want to make, like I want to like kind of uh, remove the outside, but I, <laughs> I'm really bad at doing that. I keep on removing walls when I do that, but I'd love to like clean up the outside, make it look like it's actually meant to be here rather than just floating on top of the Savannah Mountain. Um, but for now, at least, I feel like it's a really fun, uh, you know, concept of something that really shouldn't be built in survival. Like it's a very plain structure. It wouldn't be a fun thing because you're just destroying sandstone forever. But at the same time, I really wanted to see it. And now we can at least have the joy of seeing what it would have looked like if I had spent that way too long that you know insane amount of time in survival wait a minute i think it's not just the desert wells and the desert temples you find in the desert i think there's another naturally generated structure right one that no one would be insane enough to try and build in giant form but you know let's give it a try anyway here is a desert village and uh, obviously desert villages are taller uh, and uh, you know much bigger than the other one let's try and build at least one of these desert village structures in giant 10 to 1 form. And you know what we can do? The exact same command, because again, they're mostly made of sandstone. So let's go ahead and let's give this a try. 
That's right, we're gonna start making us a desert village and we're gonna start with our lowly, humble one at uh, 10 by 10 by 10 uh, sandstone blocks. It's funny, when you're placing blocks this giant, you know, like a thousand times bigger than normal, in a, a, a kind of same, a similar fashion to how you could place it normally in survival, it reminds me of like the difference between playing around with Lego and playing around with, I think it's called Mega Blocks, like the really rough knockoff version. Uh, it's, it's kind of a similar thing with, with that, where it's like, oh yeah, there are similarities, it's the same basic mechanic, but it's also very off and different at the same time. It feels different, and uh, when we finish, I'm hoping it'll feel different too. Also, I hope we don't overwrite the village when we get back there. Let's hope that doesn't happen. So I think this makes the best base building. As you can see, it's got that fun kind of structure going on right here. It's got a nice little bit of carpet, some stairs, some bookshelf thing. You know, it's kind of like the enchanting room, but one of the, one of the classic rooms in the, you know, the, uh, the Plains Village. But it's a new desert village. It's like the 2019 version of that. So it's a modern version, and we're going to try and make this in 10 to 1 scale. Or to be more realistic, we already did make it. And in fact, I did something kind of different for this that I haven't done before, where I've made it in third person using a second uh, PC connected to the same monitor. Something you can actually do uh, with Minecraft Bedrock is play with yourself. And yes, that is a great sentence to say in Minecraft. But yeah, you can actually play with yourself if you want to, and you can record it, and you can put it on the internet like I'm doing for all of you right now. So yeah, this is me, uh, you know, like, this is like kind of the time-lapse version of it. But long story short, we have ourselves a 10 to 1 scale version of this village building. And I really like the way this one has turned out for the most part. I really like um, the effect for the most part, besides like the bookshelves being annoying and besides everything else. When you scale everything else up at 10 to 1 or as close to that as you can, you know, physically do, everything actually looks kind of wonderful. I really, really, really like everything about this. I even had to use the light block for the first time, one, to light this whole place up because it was depressing and dark. You can still see some of the dark spots from it. Um, but two, it's because the torch, I tried using glowstone for a bit and I just realized why not use, you know, yellow concrete or yellow terracotta and then mix it up with using some light blocks on top and I love the uh, kind of effect that creates in the end. So this was fun because it gave me a nice first opportunity to use the light block and also it reveals why the light block's actually quite useful. If you don't know, Bedrock exclusive. If you, do, if, you, if, you, if you did know, how wonderful. If you're jealous you don't have it on web platform, then pretend that the light block doesn't exist and this is some weird hack mod thing. But yeah, this is an actual Minecraft Bedrock feature that I found my first real useful today and I quite like that. But yeah, you might be noticing there's something missing about this compared to the other one and that's right, we need a lectern, which is gonna be the most annoying part of this, but to make it 10 to one scale, we do have to make one. Another quick reminder, by the way, that even though approximating most things in Minecraft is pretty hard, real world or Minecrafty, when you take any Minecraft block and you scale it up to 10 to 1, it's really easy to work out what should go where, and I don't hate how the lectern's going so far. That's right, we've got ourselves a lectern, a very poorly approximated one that we need to light up. And by the way, as you can see, when you have something that's entirely undip from the ceiling, you're gonna have questionable things like this. But yeah, we have ourselves, once we remove the actual lectern, a proper 10 to 1 scale desert village library thing. And I really like the way this looks in 10 to 1, better than in real life, better than in normal to 1. And again, from the outside, it's kind of weird to look at in my opinion. There's something strange about the outside structure because it just isn't built uh, to be looked at from this scale. But when you go on the inside, there's just something about this that screams like, wouldn't this be a great, like, I know, part of a Hunger Games map or something along those lines. I love the idea of taking an entire village maybe one day and 10 to 1 scaling it, so maybe we'll have to do that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this one as a whole because I love the way this has turned out. And now we officially have all of the <laughs> desert structures in 10 to 1 scale. Because that's what the world needed. It needed a desert village house made of about a quarter of a million blocks because it's all deeply solid in there. Um, it's the sort of thing that I'd love to have in survival, but actually there's two reasons you shouldn't do this. One is the quarter million blocks which <laughs> doesn't take a genius to work out the days of uh, Minecraft play uh, and boring Minecraft play required for that. But there's also the fact that obviously you would also, uh, you know, not be able to fully enjoy this so much in survival because when you're on the ground, it's impressive in its own way, but you kind of need to float around from where the normal human eye would be to properly appreciate it because this is where your Minecraft, this is where your character camera would be and it looks pretty normal but it's the way that it's different that makes it more impressive and maybe that's just me or maybe it actually looks better from the floor that's uh that's a thing I should consider too. Okay, we're gonna leave all of that craziness behind us. We're gonna leave the giant desert behind us and we're instead going to make ourselves an end portal right here in the spawn near the desert temple. Actually, wait, we should make it in the desert temple. I forgot how insane it looks when you look inside this thing, like how smooth and crazy the lighting is at this level. But let's go inside and let's make ourselves an end portal because you know what? We did a never project last time. It only makes sense that we have an end size one too. Unless maybe the end portal is something we could play around with too, because we can of course 
destroy some of the blocks if we choose to. And we can even reverse and remove the portals. Maybe we should just leave these here as a fun little thing. Or maybe we could do a bunch of them side by side. And when we remove the portals, it's just a lot of black strips that don't really make any sense to anyone. Uh, maybe that's a great idea. I don't actually think so. I, you know, future idea, if anyone wants to do something stupid and uh, creative, I really think doing something with portals and like portal art, like we'd even then, if we wanted to remove the middle of these, and then that could be something too. Like what, what even is any of this? I don't know, but let's hop into the end. Because one of these silly projects that I decided to actually do in my real world was cover my end in glass. I smelted 55,000 blocks of glass and covered my end with it over the course of dozens of real uh, world survival hours, a lot of which I streamed actually. It was a lot of fun, but it's something that really makes me wonder like, that's stupid, but I want to do it again all sorts of times. I want to destroy all the end stone in the uh, end, for instance. I want to destroy all the pillars. I want to like rebuild the main end island because it's such a unique dimension. There's nothing else around here and because of that I think it'd be fun if we uh, you know give gave you one of my favorite examples which would be to replace these towers right here um, with lava so if we're gonna do and then to also replace the end stone with ice to have like fire and ice because there's a dragon here I mean it's a, a, a story of ice and fire right I mean except Minecraft so what we're gonna be go uh, going ahead and doing is we're gonna be using a different command this time first of all slash kill at Eve just because like kill all the entities here including of course the dragon the towers just we don't need any of that look we killed the dragon I'm so good Creative makes <laughs> killing the dragon so much easier than it previously should be. Isn't that satisfying? I'm not sure it actually is. But yeah, now what we're going to be using is the slash replace command. Which in this case is just using a, uh, you know, the fill command, but making sure that it only replaces another block. Again, zero replace and then obsidian. So that lava will replace obsidian just like this. Oh, we did it in the wrong direction there. Oops. <laughs> so that lava can replace the obsidian just like this. And oh god, okay, I... Should have considered the uh, impact this would have on the world, really. Maybe we should leave it that way, actually. I kind of like that, just the giant tower of lava that actually spews out. Because that's accurately how lava does work. Although, actually, what we could also use is because lava is actually multiple blocks in Minecraft. There's not just the lava we all know and love. There's also flowing lava. So this is what happens when we use flowing lava. Okay, this looks really cool, I'll admit. But I have a new plan to prevent the spill at the bottom, which is ruining some of the aesthetic, I would say. My plan is to dig into the ground a little bit and then make a little air gap beneath the tower. One that, you know, it can't actually set. Actually, maybe going even just to the very bottom of the tower might make sense. So it cuts off a little bit here. And this means what should happen is when we do the other command again, and if we do this correctly, where we make it 50, again, we're going to do the exact same command, but instead of replacing this top bit with air, we place it with lava now. Now the lava should be able to fall into a designated hole. I, I, I hope at least. I, I'm not sure if that's going to work perfectly. I can confirm it does not work perfectly. <laughs> Although there's less spillage here for some reason. Can't tell you what the reason is, but there is less of it. And just like that, look at this. We got another tower, but this one's less messy. It's not perfect. I don't know how it's so much better, but still isn't good. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Okay, maybe this is actually the place where flowing lava shines, because flowing lava... No, okay, just... <laughs> <laughs> instantly expands, does its thing anyway. Although it might stop expanding so far. No, no, that doesn't, this didn't change anything. <laughs> it didn't change anything. Okay, just for a fair point of comparison, here's with the air gap underneath it, as you get like twice of them, I should say. And this is without the air gap. There is some benefit, it seems, sometimes. Like it flows less, and I have no idea what the physics is that of causing that. But it is interesting to observe regardless. And then when you don't put anything below it, it just flows everywhere, kind of uglily, I would say. So it's worth having an air gap below it for the tiny case scenario where you need to do this. I mean, maybe maybe you choose to do these in survival. I, I don't know you. Okay, so now we can actually use blue ice, which as you might be aware of, actually does um, you know not get burnt by lava. It doesn't melt because it's uh, you know like super, it's so densely packed ice that it doesn't care about the temperature. Uh, we can use this to kind of clean up some of the mess for now from the messiest ones, I hope. Might mess with everything later, but for now we'll do that. Just to prevent this from going too bad, I guess. And then the rest of what we're going to do here, besides just cleaning up with um, blue ice, which of course is a very lovely role that it can do. But I also intend to uh, use blue ice to replace all of the end stone because I feel like, again, a great thing for the end would be if it's made of end, if it's made of ice and fire at the same time. So let's, oh, geez, just walked into a <laughs> pillar of <laughs> um, lava as it is now. Let's replace all of this end stone with uh, packed ice, which because you can only replace so many blocks at once, is going to be tricky, but let's try anyway. 
But eventually, we'll start to have a nice little effect like this. It's almost like an ice skating rink, but in your end. And in very little time, you can start to have this really nice effect of just a really bluish end. Uh, the same generation, same blocks, except they're all being replaced slowly by blue ice. Something which in survival would re re require a ridiculous amount of mining. I should know, I made entire islands made out of blue ice. So to see this much of it being filled every few seconds is a really cool thing, in my opinion. Although it still has to be noted that it's going to take you a really long time to cover the end because, you know, at least 50,000, more like 100,000, and if you go deep like I am, you know, more like a few hundred thousand blocks, it's going to take a long time to place, especially when it's such a weird surface you're covering. So just keep in mind it's a big project anyway. Of course, it's hard to reach some of the blocks on the underbelly, but that's why it's so important that you've got to keep on trying until you get them covered in blue ice. But yeah, uh, very hard process, but very rewarding to see it slowly looked like this floating island, just an ice blob. And when you're done, it should look something a little bit like this. There's something beautiful about taking such a limited dimension and replacing every single ingredient of it with something else. Admittedly, we kept the bedrock and admittedly we kept the iron bars just because I kind of like that, you know, homage to the form a bit of it. But like, you know, this would be such a cool project to see done in survival. There's just something wonderful about, you know, replacing something, about, uh, you know, using the existing form of something, but using them in entirely different ways that I really love and that I really just admire looking at right here. Again, it's an end of ice and fire, a story of ice and fire, a silly project Project you shouldn't attempt a vice inspire and I absolutely love that but it's not the only wonderful thing about the end because again the end is a really cool dimension that not enough people build in because when you go out from the end you'll start to notice how it's just this endless blank dimension for at least a thousand blocks in each dimension uh, in each direction from your main end island in fact your render distance statistically speaking isn't likely to actually cover that when you go far enough away from your main end island you'll actually end up in a big sea of nothingness again we can get away from that and there's nothing in the other direction there's just a tiny glimmer of hope over there and this is why it's so interesting to maybe use this space to build something different and that's another one of my ideas i've had for a long time because it's a really stupid one but it's one you see done a lot in you know different like artistic visions and that is for a minga cube. By the way, even placing blocks out here in the end is impossible because there's nothing on top of you, nothing to the left, the right, etc. You have to build out from your main end island to get here in survival. It's a real pain to build anything out here, but once you get out here, you have true freedom to build in any direction you want with no true shame or judgment. And this means if you want to, and you, uh, this is a great idea, it's the one dimension where you can truly build down from the very bottom of the world, again, if you so choose to. By the way, something about like the way the chunks load in here is really weird when it comes to actually trying to get down to the very bottom of the world. As you can see, we've reached it. Layer zero or layer one in the end. So now we remove all of these other blocks. And now we've got ourselves a perfect platform where we can we have literally 256 blocks of height limit because Minecraft, although it has a height limit of 256 blocks, realistically speaking, the terrain takes up about 60 of that. Unless you destroy that terrain and build from kind of below the ground, you only really have, you know, 200, about 190 something blocks. Whereas if you build from the bottom of the end, the end, not only is there nothing here to obstruct your perfect view, but also you can build things here, which includes the Menga Cube. So our very first thing is going to be a very simple Menga Cube to explain the idea. Um, again, it's like a mathematical concept where you take a cube, but then you remove every single face of it to kind of leave you with something that looks like this. I don't know what to describe it as. My brain says Rubik's Cube, but I know no Rubik's Cube looks like this, but it's a Menga Cube. It's a cube where you have the center removed, and then you can do these in any size limit you like or any generation limit you like, because you can take the exact same cube, and then you can make a cube out of those Menga cubes, and that might sound complex, but let me show you what I mean. Okay, this took me way longer than I care to admit, but as you can see, this is the second generation where we took 27 of these cubes, or I guess like, you know, uh, we took a cube that's three times the scale, and we made a cube out of cubes, and this makes the second generation Menga cube. It might be Menga cube, actually, but you know, what? it's a cube. It's a really cool concept that you've probably seen somewhere, and for some reason, it's mildly laggy as we jump around the place. This is something uh, about this part of the world that I can't quite describe, actually, but it's just happening regardless of my control inputs. Anyway, so this is the first generation. This is the second generation. Can you guess what happens next? <laughs> If you guessed three of these put together, then you're correct. And the way we're gonna use this, again, it's gonna be one of these creative, easier things, because so far, you know, besides getting the blocks, because iron blocks are hard to get, but you could use any block, it's not that much easier. But to make ones beyond this, we're gonna to start to use commands, and we're gonna, like, kind of fill them out like this, and it's gonna allow us to place blocks in a much faster, you know, rate than otherwise would be possible. So place a block, place a layer of these, and we're gonna to have to do this all the way, except it's gonna be very dangerous because we're so close to the world edge. But yeah, we need to do this just over and over again, find ourselves in the space. 
place ourselves a row, and so on and so forth, till we have a 27 by 27 cube, which as you can imagine, is gonna take some time. So I'll have to get back to you when we're done with this. So I'm just gonna level you right here. Not only was this cube hard the second generation, which shouldn't have been that difficult really, um, but trying to build the next one was so tricky, especially using commands, that we messed up everything a little bit. And then when I was just trying to show you how this would look in the end, I messed up everything even further to the degree where you can't even tell I was trying to make anything here. It's just a big mess in the sky that's vaguely reminiscent of Super Mario Sunshine maybe. Um, but yeah, one of the interesting things about this is the fact that I just wanted to show that this was insanely hard, but you probably could work out the right series of commands. It's a fun little challenge for all of you because the end version you can only make here in the end dimension would be after, you know, the next level cube, which would be 27 by 27. You could make an 81 by 81 and then finally a 241 by 241 cube. A cube so big it's hard to even conceptualize and that's why I decided to show it just in pure block form just to show how large this cube would be. Even making a cube this large of just solid blocks is so tricky to do because of the sheer millions of blocks you need to do, but just to give you a feel for what 241 by 241 looks like, here is what that is. Imagine this, but not only is it a cube, which would already be just staggering to look at, imagine this, but it's a proper Menja cube with actual holes and, you know, cubes of cubes of cubes all the way down. It's something I'd really love to make, and it's something you can only make by building them one by one by one, and it's something I messed up in its entirety, but just to prove that even the 27 by 27 one would look cool, here's just what the front of it would look like. Imagine this, but it goes all the way up all the way down to make a mega cube across. I'd love to imagine that and you know what? These are projects you shouldn't attempt and in this case <laughs> it's, it's one you definitely shouldn't attempt in survival but even in creative this one might drive you mad. So yeah it's something I might go back to into survival at some point just because it's at least easier to conceptualize there because um, yeah I'd love to have something like this somewhere in my void. Maybe not 241 by 241 size because again the sheer number of blocks that is it's 40,000 per level. We're talking again millions of Minecraft blocks but trying to do a 27 by 27 one or even 81 by 81 one which is insane number of blocks would be a very fun little project and it would look very cool so I might just do that with some of my excess blocks at some point maybe or maybe all of this is insanity but speaking of insanity let's go back to the overworld which in this silly projects world, which by the way is the real name for it, silly project world. In this silly project world, this is the, <laughs> the uh, you know, like the only way to describe it. It's absolute insanity everywhere. But one of the big projects I'd love to make is actually one of Minecraft's own structures. It's a really simple concept. It's just a pyramid, but it's a, py a brick pyramid, which actually used to exist in Minecraft itself. That's right, Minecraft used to have one of the weirdest naturally generated structures that clearly existed because Notch had this exact same, you know, curiosity about how it would look, about what if there were just brick pyramids that randomly existed in Minecraft. And I've always wanted to build a giant brick pyramid of the same scale as the old ones, but getting bricks in Minecraft survival, as you all know, it's kind of tricky. So, you know, we could spend literally days gathering the clay, we could smelt it, we could make the brick blocks, and we could still not have enough for a uh, brick pyramid because of the sheer thousands of blocks, or as you've probably worked out as the theme here, we can use commands and we can simulate that pretty simply because we can place 10,000 blocks in them, you know, the blink of an eye. I really actually want to play a little bit more than 10,000, so what we're actually going to do, we're going to say, you know what, 10,000, not enough blocks. I want to have 100 by 100, because I figured I want to have it this be a you know pretty even pyramid, but no, we actually have to go to up to 100 if we want to do that. So let's just place a few more of these, and what we're going to end up doing right here is, so 10,202 is this first layer of the pyramid. Again, this would bankrupt any player for their brick supply because of the just, you know, the ridiculous rarity that clay has, even once they patched in, you know, made, uh, you know, bricks actually non-rare again, which... Fun fact, if you haven't played Minecraft since literally 2010, one, welcome to a Minecraft video, and two, um, that you know bricks are now somewhat common, or clay is now somewhat common. However, getting it in this quantity is just not possible. And uh, yeah, if you want to make a pyramid, all we got to do is kind of like the, uh, you know, 99 bottles of beer on a wall, or, you know, like the, the nice, more fun British equivalent of, like, there was some number in a bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over, and they all rolled over and one got out. Instead, you know, one of those counting songs where you just count on forever, 99 bottles of, 98 layers of brick on the wall, 98 layers of brick, add one up, remove two from the number that you're putting in the command, 96 layers of brick on the wall, and yeah, and this, this one's 9,409, and we have to do this all the way up. Again, a ridiculously impossible feat in survival, but with just a little bit of time. It would probably be way less time if we weren't using a controller and didn't have to like manually like move each button back, but you know what? This is simulating what it's like for everyone else out there. But with just a little bit of time, we can slowly build up the brick pyramid and we can simulate what that original brick pyramid looked like, not just in its initial form, which I've always wanted because like there aren't many good screenshots of the 
super early alpha days of Minecraft. And you know, whenever I talk about something like the Brick Pyramid, it's fun to have like a better screenshot. So this will allow me to have not only a better, better pyramid, uh, you know, for taking screenshots, but also a better pyramid in terms of the sheer scale of it. Because already, look at this thing. Look at the, <laughs> the base we are building, the insanity we're gathering. Also, oops, made a mistake on the first one. You know what, we'll pretend we didn't make it and we'll fix it later. Like every mistake, it's much easier if you just pretend it didn't happen. Again, really, really solid device right there. We'll take you really far in life if you follow that. 72 layers of brick on the wall, 72 layers of brick. Remove two so you can add another layer. Now there's only 70 layers of bricks left to go on the wall. <laughs> also, you'll notice how uh, because of the way that square maths works and the same way that cubes got bigger in a much bigger way than you expected. A 10, a 10 to 1 scale building required much more. In that same way, uh, because of the square rule, it means that even though we're only on layer 68, oh, you know, we're going all the way down, so we're on the 7, 16th layer, I would say so far, off the pyramid. Again, it's not that many in. We've already used up, uh, we've gone down from having 10,000 blocks required per layer to having 4,700, because again, the number of bricks required per layer get much smaller as you go down. And this is actually a, a lesson you can take for your main Minecraft world, perhaps. Because if you ever do need to make a pyramid or something that does get like larger and larger as it goes down, you might think that doubling your pyramids, you know, like height in terms of the layers might not, you know, it might be like, oh yeah, well, it's just going to double the number of blocks used. No, because it's a square thing, it's going to more than quadruple the number of blocks used, which means this top part of the pyramid would be sat here. The bottom part would be all of these blocks right here. And obviously, if you're only filling the outside, which you should be doing, you shouldn't be having solid pyramids. But, you know, again, we need to replicate those initial pyramids that they initially had in Minecraft, which Fun fact, were solidly made of brick block, which is why apart from me, you know, I'm kind of talking Minecraft history in the middle of a, you know, video about, um, you know, like <laughs> uh, Minecraft projects and creative stuff. But again, you know what, my channel, I'll talk about Minecraft history wherever I want to. But um, yeah, it actually would have been a really cool structure to see in Monday Minecraft. Not because, you know, I think brick pyramids look so great. I think they definitely don't look great. I don't think anyone's uh, arguing they do. But the thing that is wonderful about them is the fact that they would be a wonderful source of brick. And you'd be able to use bricks in more quanti higher quantities, I guess, because you'd be able to find them more often. And just like this, what I think you'll find with the placing of the very last block, we have ourselves a pyramid, which is now <laughs> over 50 layers tall and 100 by 100 blocks wide at the base. 101 by 101, if we want to be exactly specific, which gives us a pyramid looking something along the lines of this. Look at this insanity. This is what a pyramid should look like. This is what a you know true pyramid looks like because the lines start to even fade away and you actually get a proper diagonal line kind of forming as a result. This is the cool thing about building big in Minecraft. You get kind of can lose the lines to some extent and it's wonderful. Something you probably shouldn't realistically be aiming for in Minecraft survival, but when you're playing creative and you have access to commands, you know, just a few t uh, minutes, in fact, about 10 minutes, uh, will give you access to something this big. And if you want, you can go even bigger than this. Why stop at 100 by 100 being your base layer? Why not have 150 by 150? Why not have 200 by 200? The sky is really the limit in this case. and we're only barely touching the clouds of our pyramid. You know, really, why not have a bigger pyramid? A part of me is genuinely tempted by that idea, by the way, like, you know what, why don't we just do that? Why don't we just, uh, you know, like, make ourselves a bigger pyramid, and that's another fun, ridiculous project you shouldn't attempt at all in survival. But I really like the idea of it as a creative thing, because especially with the brick texture, look at the way it kind of blurs and bleeds and blends in a really weird, confusing way. And also, we're connecting with Minecraft's heritage by looking at a brick pyramid like this. Okay, so my last idea here is actually following up on the idea of mountains, because I'm so good at making regular mountains. As you can see, these are all pretty convincing giant mountains that go well above the sky height of bedrock. However, something I've had the idea of for a really long time is the idea of an anti-mountain. What if you took Minecraft's terrain generation, which actually looks somewhat natural, like, even though it's kind of stunted, you know, only goes up to a certain height in Minecraft Bedrock, you can see how, like, this is a pretty convincing mountain on some levels. It doesn't look like a fake mountain, like some people say this looks like, you know, very wrong people. But therefore, I wondered what if we could use this exact same thing and make an anti-mountain. And of course, when you hear anti-mountain, you're like, so... What you mean then is a hole in the ground. And yeah, of course, people, when they hear anti-mountain, they're gonna picture just a giant square hole in the ground or just a hole in the ground of some form, like this one over here, which I used to uncover the mineshaft. I think it's a really great, really fun, really cool idea, don't get me wrong. But I also think, what if we use the natural contours of Minecraft to make our anti-mountain? So that's what I'm gonna be doing. 
Because what we have ourselves right here is a mountain. Every you know block in the mountain has its own individual height. What if we took every individual block and tried to dig it down roughly the same height that it used to be above the ground? And this is going to be a monumental uptaking, but let's give it our best shot and let's see what we end up with. So 68 is going to be our base layer, and every block that goes up to 69, we're instead going to take down to 67. Every block that goes up to 70, we're instead going to take down to 66. I think that's the correct maps. And, uh, you know, we're going to do this so on and so forth for every single block in the mountain to try and eventually end up with, uh, you know, something that should resemble an anti-mountain an anti of some form. So again, 71, that's three blocks above 68. So we take it down 68, then we take it three blocks below, down to 65 like this. And yeah, we're going to try this now. So about 20 minutes in, here's what it looks like. As you can see, it's not particularly cavey, which is good. We're not just creating a cave right here. And uh, it's hard to imagine what it would be like without the giant wall there. But um, I like that you really can start to spot that it's the mountain style generation just downwards instead. And I'm hoping this improves and doesn't just become like a giant pit in the ground. That's the hope, because otherwise all of the time delicately mapping each block would be wasted. Okay, I'm literally two hours into this now. It doesn't look anything like an anti-mountain. It vaguely looks like a mountain when you see it from the bottom up, although a mountain that starts at Y44 for some reason. And uh, yeah, honestly, the most notable things about this are not the mountain areas, the anti-mountain things. It's the areas I haven't yet mounted up. You can see the big pillars. They're really cool to stare at. These are really, really fascinating. And it makes me think that maybe there's something better in like, destroying most of a mountain, making most of an anti mountain as opposed to having a full one. Uh, I'm gonna go for a little bit longer, but I don't think this is getting better. But I'm hoping that maybe if we go all the way to the other side over here, that will improve things, like having both sides of an anti mountain That's the hope. I, I'm not believing in it right now, though. Okay, so now I have a full area that's properly dug into the ground. And honestly, I, I don't see the mountain too well. You can vaguely see it if you think really hard into the gap, but most people when they see this, they're not seeing that. They're seeing some form of quarry, or maybe, if we're really lucky, they're seeing maybe like a super cool ravine. Like this is kind of like a funky, fun ravine that actually has real ways in and out that are a bit more fun than a ravine, which just goes pretty much straight down. So this could be a great way to update ravines and slash or caves, am I right? Yeah, cave update mention every video, it's gotta happen. But no, more seriously, you can see how this is a really fun concept that would have taken me uh, a long, long time in survival and only took me a long-ish time in creative. I mean, only just under three hours. Not not a ridiculous amount of time in the end. Maybe it gets better the more we work on it. Maybe we just need a bigger mountain. But as a concept, I think the anti-mountain, the idea of having like a, a pretty deep destroyed area is actually kind of fun. And I, I kind of wonder like, would this look better if it was all dirt actually? But I think as a, like a cave concept, very fun idea. Would like to keep it. But yeah, this is just a reminder of how interesting Minecraft's terrain can be and how interesting, uh, even in its current form, and how you can do things using the exact same model Minecraft gives you, using the exact same randomness, you know, which is all based on Perlin noise generators with just weird pre-programmed, uh, you know, limit uh, limitations. But you can see how that creates some pretty interesting terrain that you can just flip on its head and create something else that is nothing like it, but also in exactly the same as it. And I think that is an interesting thing to say, nothing else. Uh, which is the better mountain? Is it my mega mountains or is it my anti-mountain? This is the question for you, I guess. And if not, then I hope you'll enjoy today's video regardless. If you did like it, then, you know, there's a function on YouTube that you can click that lets you know, lets me know that you thought that. And if you didn't like it, there's another function. I think it's called dis I like, ha ha ha. Also subscribe if you would like to see future videos from me and turn on notifications if you'd like notifications. If you wouldn't like notifications, then don't hit the notification bell. Because otherwise, you'll, you'll get notifications you don't want in your life. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much for watching today's video. And I guess I'll see you all in the next one. Also, something I really want to do um, is actually with this desert well, like use the, uh, maybe with the desert village as well, is use the fact that it's so, uh, you know, like boxy and big to maybe like smooth it out and make a good design for it using the head to one scale. Is that ridiculous or does it look good because it's in, you know, like because it's perfectly square? Let me know, because it's something I can't stop thinking about. And yeah, anyway, with that said, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you 
in another one that's not this one. Goodbye.